Dear students, you are welcome to lesson 3. Uh, we are still looking at chemicals of life. And in this particular lesson, we are introducing the organic chemicals of life. In the first two lessons, we had been looking at the inorganic chemicals of life. Where we looked at water, its functions and properties. And we also, in lesson two, we looked at mineral, minerals and ions. And then they have functions in the bodies of living systems. So in this third lesson, we shall be introducing the organic chemicals of life. And as you can see there, there are majorly four carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids. But in this lesson, we are going to start with carbohydrates. And uh, I know you are well acquainted with carbohydrates as energy-giving foods. But now we need to go into the chemistry of these carbohydrates, more details about them. And as we know, these carbohydrates com uh, comprise of a large group of organic compounds. But what unites them is that they all contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. All carbohydrates contain carbon, hydrogen, and uh, oxygen. And they have a general formula which you can see there on your screen, CXH2OY. Uh, although this is a general formula for all of them, that they should obey, but some of them may not uh, purely obey this formula. For example, the, the oxyribose sugar, which has uh, less by one oxygen. It has five carbon atoms, ten hydrogen atoms, and it's supposed to be five oxygen atoms, but one oxygen atom is lost. That's why it's called the deoxyribose sugar. So it doesn't conform to that formula. However, most of the other carbohydrates conform to that formula, you see there. So what do we learn from this slide? We learn that all carbohydrates contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And then the general formula is there as well. So let's start uh, let's proceed by looking at the main functions of carbohydrates. To begin with, they are the primary source of energy, being oxidized in the body to release energy. I mean, they are primary source of energy. So they can be broken down, oxidized, and then to give us energy. All the energy we use in the body, most of it is from the carbohydrates. However, when carbohydrates are worn out from the body, the body may resort to using other sources of energy like lipids or even proteins. But primarily, carbohydrates are meant to be the energy-giving food. Secondly, they are structural components of cells. For example, cellulose, which makes up the cell walls of most of the plants, if not all the plants is a carbohydrate, it's a polysaccharide. So it's a very strong uh, polysaccharide which makes structures of plant cells. As you can see there, uh, they are determinants of the osmotic potential of the body fluids. Therefore, they maintain the blood pressure. So they determine how much water should be absorbed into the body fluid. Yes, if there are more carbohydrates in the blood, then it would the blood will absorb more water, and therefore the blood pressure will increase. So depending on the quantity of carbohydrates in the blood, they can easily determine the amount of water to be absorbed, and therefore the blood pressure as well. And then the carbohydrates are also recognized units on the surface of the body cells. They are components, component structures of the surface cell membranes, which can easily be recognized by antibodies. So as you see in the immune responses, they majorly depend on the, the peripheral carbohydrates that can be used as the uh, surface membranes for detection. They can be used for detection either for microbes or foreign bodies that, or, that invade the body. So antibodies can easily detect them and then fight against them. And then the other one is, uh, those are the major functions 
of carbohydrates. And I want you to, in your summary book, to make a summary of those functions of carbohydrates before we move on to this other uh, part of our lesson where we are going to look at the types of carbohydrates. So in the types of carbohydrates, there are majorly three. There are those that we call monosaccharides, which are single sugar un uh, units. Then we have disaccharides, which are double sugar units. And then we have polysaccharides, which involve very many sugar units. From the word mono, mono means one, di means two, and poly means many. So we have the three types of carbohydrates in that category. Monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. So let's start with the monosaccharides. We have some examples there. You can see glucose, fructose, and galactose. Those are some of the examples of the monosaccharides. So let's look at them in detail. So monosaccharides comes from the two words. One, mono, which means one, and then saccharide, saccharide, which means sugar. So it means a monosaccharide is a one sugar unit. These are substances consisting of one molecule of a sugar. And they are known as sim uh, simple sugars because of the, their structure. So let's look at their properties. To begin with, they have a sweet taste. So when you have ever eaten glucose, you must have realized that it is sweet. It has a sweet taste. They also dissolve in water. When you pour, for example, glucose in water, it disappears very fast and the water remains colorless. So it is highly soluble in water, as you can see there. And then they form crystals. If you touch on them and feel, you, you feel some small solids. Those ones are crystals. So all the monosaccharides form crystals. And then they have low molecular mass. Yeah, because they are just single sugars. They are made up of only one sugar unit. So therefore their molecular weight is very low as well. And then the other property is that they can pass through selectively permeable membranes. Because of their smaller uh, molecular mass, it, they can easily permeate through uh, semi-permeable membranes, like the visking tubing uh, demonstrated there. You can see that. And then the other one is they change the color of Benedict solution from blue to orange when boiled with the solution. Thus, they are known as reducing sugars. So monosaccharides, all monosaccharides are reducing sugars. They are capable of reducing a copper two salt, copper two iron from Benedict solution to copper one. Copper two is blue. Now when it is reduced to copper one, copper one is brown or orange. So that's when you see that in the test for reducing sugars, the Benedict solution, the blue color changes to green, orange, and then finally to, to brown. Yes, indicating that reducing sugars have been able to reduce the copper 2 iron in the blue solution to copper 1 iron in the brown or orange solution. So that's another very important property of reducing sugars. Great. So let's look at some more details about the monosaccharides. These monosaccharides are named using the suffix os. O-S-E. That's why you hear the word sucrose. It ends with the word O-S-E. O-S. Fructose. Galactose. So that is one of the key things you need to know about the nomenclature of the monosaccharides. And then they contain either an aldehyde group, the CHO, and are called aldoses. Or some of them contain a ketone group, the C double bond O, and these ones are called the ketones or ketoses. Uh, these details of aldehydes and ketones, you will cover them more in the organic chemistry. But in simple terms, the aldehyde is where the CHO combination is found at the terminal end of an organic compound or at the end. 
and then the ketone is where the CH, the C double bond O is found in the middle of an organic compound. But you will find, you look, you get more information about this in your organic uh, chemistry. So, but at least we now know that monosaccharides can either be aldehydes or ketones, and then they have that general formula there. You can see, you can pop it down and master it, and then you try to substitute it to form different uh, monosaccharides, as you can try it out. And then also this uh, monosaccharides can be classified based on the number of carbon atoms. For example, when a monosaccharide has three carbon atoms. It is it can be called a triose sugar. From the word tri meaning three. If it has five carbon atoms, it can be called a pentose sugar. From the word penta meaning five. If there are six, they can be called hexose sugars. And if there are seven, heptose, and so on. So they can also be classified basing on the number of carbon atoms they possess. So let's start by the trios sugars. We said the trios, what do we say trios are? We said trios are uh, monosaccharides with the three carbon atoms. Okay. So trios, sugar, trios is a monosaccharide or a simple sugar containing three carbon atoms. And we have examples there. Uh, we have the glyceraldehyde, which is an aldose sugar, an aldehyde. As you can see there, three carbon atoms, and then we have the oxygen atoms, and then the hydrogen atoms there, forming the glyceraldehyde. And it is an aldehyde because it has the C double bond O at the terminal end. As you can see there, it is structure. Then we have the dihydroxyacetone, which is a ketose sugar. It's a ketone, and it's a ketone because the C double bond O is in the middle. But I told you earlier that we look at this more in organic chemistry. But those two, the glyceraldehyde and the dihydroxyacetone, are trio sugars. They are made up of only three carbon atoms. Then there is another category called the pentose sugars, from the word penta, meaning how many carbon atoms? Five. So the sugars are found, for example, in nucleic acids, we have, those are pentose sugars, those ones that are found in the nucleic acid. Yeah, it has five carbon atoms. Examples, the, the oxyribose and the ribose sugars that you can find. The oxyribose is found in the DNA. It, it's a structural uh, element in the DNA. That's why the name of the DNA is called DDO. DNA is the, oxy, the, the oxyribose nucleic acid, the oxyribonucleic acid. Then we have RNA is ribonucleic acid. So the oxyribose pentose sugar is a component of DNA. And ribose pentose sugar is a component of RNA. And RNA and DNA are called nucleic acids. So these pentose sugars are components of nucleic acid. And then we have hexose sugars. You remember hexose, we said these are six carbon atoms they have six carbon atoms and uh, example is glucose there and then also fructose even galactose so members at least now we can classify our missing on the number of carbon atoms they possess either into trios sugars pentose or hexose sugars in the next lesson, we are going to continue to look at these sugars in much more detail. But I want you to summarize what we have looked at and then send me your summary. I would like to see whether you have been able to understand what we have looked at. Thank you so much. I want to encourage you to continue staying at home until it is very safe for us to return back to school.